ho ho everyone and welcome to an extra special festive episode of UDS Radio. We're not going to number this one because it's just like a it's a nice little festive bonus treat to you. And uh, in this episode we are going to, uh, rather than recount the news like we normally would, we are going to look at some of the Doctor Who Christmas specials and as you can see if you're watching the video version, rank them by the greatest, fantastic, good, okay or just bad. Now, full disclosure, I, although I am named after a Doctor Who, I am not, uh, I, my name is Tom Baker, uh, I am not a Doctor Who specialist, and therefore I have requisitioned the skills of UDS's resident Whovian, Matthew Dobby. Hello there, Tom. I am really hoping you can help me out today, Dobby. How the devil are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. You know what? This wasn't my idea, but when Tom suggested it to me, I, I, I had this overwhelming feeling of... I've never been able to speak with such authority on something I know so well. <laughs> that's that's why we hired you into this uh, this fold, Dobby, and we're we're hoping that uh, you can do us proud today. You suggested it, and I was just like, I, I this is this is what I was born to do. I can do this so well. <laughs> like Lady Gaga once said, "You were born to do this." Ma 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 ma. Put your uh, paws up. Sour candy, so sweet. Then I'll get a little angry. Uh, you can find us on all manner of social media and podcasting platforms and right here at youtube.com forward slash upside down shark. Hey, if you're watching the video version, why not give us a like and subscribe? It's Christmas after all. That's that's the gift you can give us. And uh, frankly, if you didn't, then I'm going to call you a Grinch because that's what you are. And you don't want to be a Grinch because now he's Benedict Cumberbatch and no one wants that. But anyway, um, so... We have got a grand total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I believe, to rank, rate, and review. Uh, I'm not going to do these in any sort of chronological order, but uh, I think uh, I think we should get started, don't sure, you? Sure, sure. Yeah. Also, I'll, you... I'll point out, I'll just point out, we've got 13 Christmas specials. We don't have Jodie Whittaker's New Year's special mm. resolution in this. We've just got the Christmas specials for the Doctors for... Uh, the 10th Doctor, 11th Doctor, and the 12th Doctor, David Tennant, Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, Chris Rexton didn't have a Christmas special, and Jodie Whittaker has so far not had a Christmas special either. Nope. And uh, and New Year's is not Christmas, therefore no. it's just Christmas today. Although I think she's a pretty good Doctor, just bad yeah. writing. Um, yeah. But anyway, we'll get started uh, with A Christmas Carol. Dobby, what happens in this episode? So A Christmas Carol is... I mean, first and foremost, it's a little bit of an unfair place to start when we're ranking the Christmas specials of Doctor <laughs> Who, but alphabetically, I guess it makes sense. A, a Christmas Carol is kind of what it says on the tin. Um, the doc the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, his companions, Amy and Rory, have just gotten married and they're on a honeymoon on a ship that's about to crash into a planet. Um, Matt Smith's 11th Doctor decides, hey, I've got to stop that from happening. So he goes to a guy called Kazran Sardik, played by Michael Gambon. You may know him as Dumbledore. Uh, who is in control of the, the skies on this planet, basically, and can clear the clouds so the ship can land safely. But he won't do it. He's a bit of a Scrooge, you might say. Uh -huh. And and the 11th Doctor has the sneaky idea, I'll Christmas Carol this bitch, and he goes back into Kazran Sardik's timeline, and every Christmas just takes him on an adventure and makes him a better person. It's It's effectively the 11th Doctor as the ghost of Christmas past this episode, and it's really good. Interesting. So, uh, is this what what companion was around at this time? So, uh, this was Amy and Rory, Karen Gillan and Arthur Darville, okay. were companions at this point. So, this is sort of like peak Matt Smith. This was this was Matt Smith's first Christmas special. It came at the end of series five, which is Matt Smith's best and is one of the best of the whole uh, revitalized New Who, whatever you want to call it, as far New as I'm concerned. <laughs> New Who. Um, so, where would you say? In the grand scheme of things, we don't, we don't have to, you know, uh, set them in concrete now. We can uh, change them around later on. But uh, where are you thinking at the moment? Do you think this ends up in the greatest, fantastic, good, okay, or just plain bad? I mean, I can, I can say with absolute certainty, and this will be concrete, A Christmas Carol is the best Doctor Who Christmas special. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so the okay. greatest. <laughs> straight, straight to the top then, straight to the top. Yeah. Okay, we're starting strong. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the end, let's start at the end, specifically the end of time. Uh, tell mm. us a little bit about the end of time. So the end of time was both a Christmas special and the first New Year special, really, because it's a two-parter. It was the last 
story of David Tennant's Tenth Doctor, and obviously it's full of a little bit of pomp and circumstance because he was on his way out. He was about to become Matt Smith. I there's a lot of people uh, who who aren't that into the end of time, and I wouldn't count myself as one of those people. I really love it. Uh, it's one, I think it was the first time I ever sat watching TV and genuinely bawled my eyes out because wow. I didn't want I didn't want David Tennant to go. I really didn't. So, yeah, um, I'm, I mean, the ending I remember, I don't really remember what happens in this episode, but I still remember that ending where he just looks so tearful and says, I don't want to go just as yeah, he starts to regenerate. Um, yeah, that is such a hit. But as I say, I don't really remember that much of what happens before. So why don't you tell me just the so, spark notes? So basically, the 10th Doctor in the previous episode, which is the Waters of Mars, has been told that, uh, or has been given a sign that he's gone too far and is going to die soon. Uh, this episode basically sees him returning to Earth, believing that a, a prophecy he was given of someone will knock four times, which will mark his end. Uh, he returns to Earth and he believes this is going to be the master who has, uh, revived himself after having been killed in the last of the Time Lords a couple of series ago. It gets a bit convoluted to talk about, doesn't it? It's John um, Sims, isn't it? I think the John actor. Sims master still at this yeah. point, yeah. Uh, the master is resurrected and most of the first part is the doctor trying to get to the master and say, look, something's going to happen. We can stop this. Uh, and he's joined by Wilfred Mott, who was Donna Noble's grandfather and Donna Noble was played by Catherine Tate. Donna Noble is the best of the, uh, companions overall. Except for Bernard Cribbins. Except for Bernard Cribbins as <laughs> Wilfred Mott, who is here. They are the best. Donna, Donna's great and, she had a pretty nice family, except for her mother. Um, come the end of the first episode of The End of Time, the Master has been taken in by a character called Joshua Naismith, who has found this alien technology which he thinks can allow his daughter to live forever. The Master is put in control of uh, making this thing work again. But he's the Master. He double-crosses. He effectively makes a, a gate that turns everyone on Earth into the Master, which means, yes, there are at the time would have been six or seven billion versions of the master running around earth and all that was left to fight him was the doctor uh bernard cribbins as wilfred mott a couple of cactus shaped aliens and donna noble who had nothing happen to her uh it, it, ringing it, any bells <laughs> it, it r rings a bell now and there's a there's a pun about it being a real life on mars but uh that feels very very shoehorned um, um so so in part two of this uh Basically, the Doctor doesn't know what to do. He, he Obviously, the Master's become this big presence, and the Doctor's like, well, I've got to stop this somehow. But he ends up on a spaceship with these Cactus people and, and Wilfred, and is just sort of hovering out in space. Meanwhile, it turns out the Time Lords, who are stuck within the Time Locked Time War, uh, if, you don't know what, if you don't know an awful lot about Doctor Who, this is going to sound like so much gibberish. <laughs> it sounds uh, like they're talking about Star Wars. This is the thing, right? <laughs> Uh, they're, they're inside the time war they're right at the end of the time war and they're trying to devise a way of getting out because they know that the doctor who was alive during the time war is about to kill both all of them and the daleks uh they do this by implanting a rhythm of four uh, da, 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 inside the master's head when he's a child um i remember this to... drum thing yes, yes i remember that that really rings a bell so we then cut to present time when the master is everyone on earth he decides, hey, let's all listen at the same time and see if we can work out where this sound is coming from. Uh, and meanwhile, the Time Lords have sent something, I think it's a white point star, something, it's called something like that, to Earth to help latch onto the signal. The Master finds this, he listens for the sound, and putting them together, uh, he's able to effectively bring Gallifrey and the Time Lords back into our universe, our timeline, blah, blah. Uh, the Doctor is like, not intending to get involved until he realizes the time was coming back and suddenly shit hits the fan. He's not excited about that. He goes into full on action mode. He even picks up a gun that has been handed to him by Wilfred Mott and he's going to go and stop them. And long story short, he does stop them. Him and the master both fight back and he thinks he's saved the day. He's not going to die. It turns out having put Wilfred into a radioactive chamber so he won't be killed by anything that's going on currently. Uh, Wilfred is then the person who knocks four times and signals that the Tenth Doctor is about to die. The Tenth Doctor goes in, takes on a lethal amount of radiation, but doesn't die just yet. He goes on a little victory lap to say goodbye to all his companions and regenerates into Matt Smith. 
There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, I, I remember thinking this one was... I think this is the last one I watched where I was watching the series simultaneously and didn't just tune in for the uh, the uh, Christmas special. And I remember yeah. this one hitting hard. I think this is... As you say, it's it's very self indulgent in that you know it, it tug, tugs on the heartstrings as hard as it can. It goes on this big space opera thing as well, and I love it. I I as I say, this is one I can say I've seen, and I would say it goes in fantastic. I I've got a lot of love for this this two parter, and I know I said I said earlier a lot of people don't seem to be as into it nowadays. I I've never stopped loving it. Is it particularly Christmassy? Not really. There's some Christmassy stuff going on, but it's all sort of background and certainly come the second part, it's all forgotten about, really. Um, I, I think I'd concur. I think I'd put this into Fantastic as well. Let's do it. As yeah. I say, we can always move stuff about once we got the, a little bit more context, but yeah. a strong start, a strong start. Let's see if one uh, Peter Capaldi can continue this with Last Christmas. Good yep. song. Is it a good episode? Yes. So Last Christmas is Peter Capaldi's first Christmas special. This comes at the end of season series eight, sorry. Uh, series eight is a bit of a, not necessarily a controversial one, but a lot of people didn't warm to Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor. And I mean, I personally would argue that's kind of the point of his first series because it's from series nine onwards that he truly starts to develop into the character that the 12th Doctor is really going to be and who the Doctor is going to be anew, in a way, because he's at the start of a new set of regenerations, and he's kind of questioning who he is in Series mm. 8. This really starts at the end of Series 8, but mostly in this episode, in Last Christmas. Uh, in Last Christmas, basically it's dreams upon dreams upon dreams upon dreams. Uh, the Doctor and Clara, uh, the Doctor picks Clara up, having left her at the end of Series 8, uh, and heads to a base at the North Pole, I think. And it turns out there's just these aliens that attach to your face and put you into a dream that you think is completely real and just suck the soul out of you. And also, Nick Frost turns up as Santa Claus. Is he real or just part of the dream? You kind of have to decide that for yourself. It's, 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 it's the 12th Doctor having a bit of fun, but it's a very dark Christmas. It's arguably the darkest of the Christmas specials. It sounds like the Matrix with the idea of these, you know, soul sucking things that are keeping you in some sort of fantasy realm. Yeah. Uh, you've also got, there's, there's a good little cast of people on this base. You've got Faye Marseille, who's been in loads of other stuff, who plays, oh, I can't think what her character's called. I want to say Shona, but I don't know if it is. Um, she plays a really good character, and I think she was being set up to be a new companion at one point, but, uh, Jenna Coleman decides she wasn't going to leave, uh, at that point, so she didn't, which is one of those lost companions we may never see, unfortunately. Um, the, the aliens themselves are, are uh, interesting at the very least, but they don't really do a lot once they're attached to your face. They just kind of put you into the dream state. And it, it, it it's, it's, there's that sort of meme about, you know, twist endings where it was all a dream. And this mm. kind of does fall into it a little bit. But okay. throughout the episode, you're kind of getting, oh, that was all a dream. No, that was still all the, all a dream. I think by the end of it, you've gone through about, you realize you're about 10 levels down into dreams. And come the end of it, the doctor just keeps waking up a couple of times and thinking, oh no, that was a dream as well, which does, f- it does feel a little bit, um, cheap, but not mm. as cheap as it could have been. Okay. So in a way, this kind of reflects where Peter Capaldi was as the, uh, as the 12th doctor in sort of a, yes. an episode that's kind of finding its fee, that's maybe trying a few new things that, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's a 50 50 hit rate, whether or not it works or not, but broadly speaking, still pretty entertaining. I would say, I, I, ooh, would I say it's, it, I, I don't know if it's the 12th Doctor's best Christmas special, but it's an episode I have a lot of time for. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking it's sort of somewhere between okay and good then. Um, wh- where would you put it as a fan? I, I'm leaning, I'm sort of in between good and fantastic. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Should we, should we stick it in good for now and then, uh, and then see where we're at at the end? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Okay, let's put Last Christmas smack bang in the middle. I would, I would just to add on that, Nick Frost as Santa Claus is really good. And I think, in fact, no, I'm going to bump that up to fantastic right now. Wow. Just because Nick Frost is really good as Santa Claus. Would you say it's better than the end of time or just below? It's, it's, it's below the end of time. But if you want a, a Christmas special that is actually Christmassy purely by having Santa Claus within it, you know, it, it fits the bill and is a good enough story as far as I'm concerned. 
Very good, very good. One might say even fantastic. Can old Peter Boy continue it with the return of Dr. Mysterio? Not Jake Gyllenhaal, but something else altogether. <laughs> What's this one all about, Dobby? The return of Dr. Mysterio is effectively Doctor Who doing a superhero show. Uh, so after Series 9 of Doctor Who, you got the Christmas special, The Husbands of River Song, and then through the entirety of 2016, there was no new Doctor Who. And so come Christmas again, we had another Christmas special. It was the return of Dr. Mysterio. So in The Husbands of River Song, we'll touch on it a bit more, but uh, the Doctor basically says goodbye to River Song uh, mm -hmm. once and for all. And in The Return of Dr. Mysterio, he's now got the companion of Matt Lucas as Nardole, who is a character, a character I have a lot of time for, actually, <laughs> um, who's kind of there to try and help him get through this uh, this loss of a woman he loved. And effectively, the Doctor is initially in New York purely because he's trying to fix some a problem he's caused in New York in an earlier episode, in an earlier incarnation, in fact, right. and accidentally ends up giving a child superpowers. Uh, he then returns 30 years later or something, finds out this child who gained super uh, superpowers has become a superhero. Uh, what I don't think he's called Dr. Mysterio. I think the Dr. Mysterio in the title is just the Doctor's name. Uh, he, the 12th Doctor has a tendency to sort of give himself nicknames that don't really fit him, but I think right. Dr. Mysterio is one of them. Uh, effectively, there's there's a a shady organisation who are trying to... I can't remember if they're trying to blow up the Earth or just New York or something, but the superhero ends up having to deal with this. The Doctor's also there. The superhero's having a sort of... Uh, he, he he He's in love with a friend he's had since he was a child who has a child and doesn't really seem to notice him. There's all that sort of, you know, relationship drama in it. It's, 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 it's a good episode that doesn't necessarily stick in the mind too much. But I think the true standout, aside from the fact it's got the superhero stuff, I think the 12th Doctor and, I mean, Nardole as well, but the 12th Doctor especially is the standout of the Return of Doctor Mysterio. Okay. Um, I had no idea that Matt Lucas played in a companion. That must have completely skipped my radar. He, so he did this, and then he was back for the entirety of Series 10. And the TARDIS right. team of 12th Doctor, Matt Lucas as Nardo, and Pearl Mackey as Bill Potts mm. is one of my favourite TARDIS teams. I love it. So, so was this his first outing, then, did you say? or uh, So Matt Lucas initially appears in The Husbands of River Song, but it's kind of... Okay. A, it's not necessarily a cameo, but an extended cameo, maybe. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And and so, uh, would you, is there enough of that that banter between the main cast and you know that camaraderie and uh, chemistry, sorry, the word, where uh, you think this is a good episode, or would you say it goes as far as fantastic? Where where are you thinking this might go? I I'm th I'm thinking good for this one. I I think the banter between the Doctor and Nardole builds in series 10, and this is just sort of the start of it. I okay. think it's a good episode. It's nothing outstanding, but it's a good good episode. And I'll be honest, the Christmas specials of Doctor Who are never... Uh, are rarely up there with the very best of Doctor Who anyway. Unless it's a Christmas Carol, apparently. Yeah, the Christmas uh, Carols is great. Well, we will move on to the episode we have just mentioned, which is The Husbands of River Song. What yep. happens in this very out of uh, chronological order running of episodes? Yeah, so let's go back in time slightly then, shall we? Uh, effectively, the 12th Doctor has never run into River Song at this point, uh, and he just happens to bump into her, and she doesn't recognise. As far as River Song knows, the Doctor dies at the end of Matt Smith's life. She doesn't know he's regenerated another time, and so you sort of get this fish out not necessarily not fish out of water you get this sort of role reversal where river song sort of steals the tardis thinking that her doctor is there with him uh, with her sorry and the, and the doctor's just sort of taking on the companion role and he's relishing it as well you get this you whenever the doctor gets a new companion you get the whole the companion enters the tardis scene and this is what it's like the doctor gets a chance to do his own take on that and it's really good you this is matt lucas as nardole uh, making his first appearance alex, alex kingston's currently final appearance of River Song and you have Greg Davis as King Hydroflax who is uh, a giant robot who's king of a planet or a solar <laughs> system or something. Uh, for the majority of the episode he's just a head who's put into a bag that uh, uh, River Song is carrying around but it's really good. Huh. Um, basically this is a look at the relationship between the Doctor and River Song and come the end of it when she realises 
it's him after having given a speech about how the doctor could never really love her and him just you know repeating her her oft quoted phrase of hello sweetie back to her and her realizing what's going on it's just it's just a lovely little episode this one this is a really good episode because the the story of river song is much like this list is told way out of order is all it? over the place all and, over the place yeah and and so i i vaguely remember some of it happening in the, some of the earlier seasons that i watched um, yeah. but i have no idea really how it ended up do you feel like this as sort of the last appearance so far is is a nice way of ending it do you think it's it sort of fits the uh it's it's a fitting end to such a sort of a convoluted but also very significant uh arc in the new who timeline so i don't know if you'll remember but the first time we ever see river song is with david tennant's 10th doctor and it just so Mm. happens to be the first time he's ever seen river song and she dies in that episode so we always knew how it ended and she told us was it i think it might have been in that episode she told us that the last time she saw the doctor before appearing in that story he uh he came up to her in a brand new suit with a new haircut and spent a night on derillion with her and it just so happens that a night on derillion lasts 24 years okay uh, and we and we see that play out at the end of the husbands of river song and i think it's it's the sort of happy ending you get before the ending you know has already happened mm. in a way and I, yeah, I think the episode ends with the episode, uh, the the words flashing up on screen, on sc- flashing up on screen, uh, and they lived happily ever after or something. It's Bless. it's just really good. It's it's a fun old Christmas romp that one. And from what I remember from that episode where she does indeed die, she yeah. she whispers his name in his ear, doesn't she? Yeah, that's because uh, he doesn't trust her, and she's yeah. like, "The only way I can make you trust you is to tell you." this and she whispers his name yeah do we ever find out what his actual name is or is that still we never find out and ideally we never will what do you think his name is uh something humans can't pronounce clive there we go okay (laughs) uh where do we put the husbands of river clive i mean song i i would put that in fantastic as well truthfully cool uh anywhere in the ranking of fantastic do you think it's better than the end of time in between the end of time and last christmas I think it's better than last Christmas. Okay. Oops. Uh, we will put it there. Cool, cool, cool. This is, as you could say, this is kind of a very stacked list so far. So uh, far, yeah. We're getting to the, oh, the no. lower end. Oh, no. Okay. Well, let's see where the snowmen take us. Okay. So the snowmen's a weird one for me. There are a lot of people who really like the snowmen. It's never really been, been an episode I gravitate towards. The snowmen has this weird distinction in that it's, it doesn't come at the end of a series. It comes slap bang in the middle of series seven. Hmm. Uh, series seven, you had the first five episodes, which were the Doctor, Amy and Rory basically having adventures and coming to the end of their time. In the Snowmen, having basically witnessed the end of Amy and Rory in his life in the previous episode, The Angels Take Manhattan, the Doctor has decided he's going to retire. He's given up being the Doctor. He's just going to go live in Victorian London, be and a grumpy be a old snowman. sod. Be a grumpy old sod who lives on a cloud. And that's where we find him. And he runs into... Oh, what's her name? Is it Oswin? Or is it Clara? No, I think she's called Clara at this point. Clara's a weird character. If I tried to go into Clara too much, we'd be here all day, so I won't. But he runs into a version of Clara in this period, and she slowly brings him out of his shell and he's interested in why he's run into her here um the 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 bad guy in this episode is effectively which well, it's it's a, it's a character called the great intelligence who originally turned up and fought the second doctor back in the 60s i think um but he's here he's basically a giant snow globe who's voiced by ian mckellen and wow. later and later takes over the body of richard e grant uh who are both in this episode huh. It's it's a pretty good cast for a pretty unmemorable episode, really. Um, you get the Paternoster gang, which is a gang of a Silurian, a Sontaran, and a human. They're called Jenny, Vastra, and Strax. Not in that order. Um, and they're and they're always good fun to be around, even if they're not necessarily the greatest of characters. Um, the the t- the titular snowmen are effectively created by the Great Intelligence and are just snowmen with teeth. I don't really think I don't remember them serving much purpose other than being henchmen the story itself is basically 
Clara is a nanny and wants to look after some kids. And I, I don't remember an awful lot about this episode, to tell the truth. There are a lot of people who would swear by the snowmen as being a really good episode. It just doesn't really cut it for me. I mean, if you can't remember much of it, that is pretty indicative of it being yeah. a bit lame. Um, where would you put this one? I think I would say this one is bad. Bad? Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I See, that's the thing. I don't know if it changed, but... I had this weird bias that I much preferred the episode set either in the present or the future compared to the past. I always yeah, yeah. found them a little bit more boring, even since the Christopher Eccleston days. And I don't know why. I, don't, I really don't know if it's just maybe the, the aesthetic of the older episodes, but I always just found them a bit slower and a little bit more dull. I, I, would, I would say I, I, do, I think I have that bias as well a lot of the time. And that's not because there are some really good episodes set mm. in the past, but a lot of the time when it's the past, I get a bit. Oh. and especially when it's victorian era past yeah. i just don't care about it you know what i mean you do it all the time i'm sure you can do very nicely with your with your costumes budget in victorian time but i just don't think it's very interesting and they go there all the time I, um i think yeah. you're right now that you mentioned that because i remember uh, there's episode three of season one i can't really remember what happens um it's the unquiet dead it's the charles darwin one yeah yeah that one i thought was pretty disappointing after the end of the world one the week mm. before um there's obviously this one which by all accounts ain't great did i just, did I just say charles darwin dickens that i that, meant dickens if i, I said darwin I, I i knew what you meant i knew what you yeah meant. um but then you go back to the ones there's the one that's set in pompeii and that one's pretty good the and pompeii so, one is excellent yeah and so this is the thing i think when they do pass that they've not been to i think they usually do it great but i think it's because the victorian era has been done to death it's a little mm. bit Hmm. You've got a time machine. You keep going back to Victorian era London. I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Well, speaking of literary figures, let's go to C.S. Lewis's, uh, and this is actually a thing he wrote. No lie, the Doctor, the Wind, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. So that, so that, like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is the worst oh. of uh, of the Christmas specials, oh. and I dare say it's one of the worst episodes of Doctor Who. Uh, the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe has an interesting premise and does nothing with it. At What's all. the premise? It's effectively Narnia, right? The Doctor uh, is falling from a spaceship out of space and ends up getting saved by, I think her name is Madge, um, played by Claire Skinner, who used to be an outnumbered. Uh, she saves him, and the following year, he's like, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to look after them on Christmas because they did a good thing for me." And it turned out that. Um, I don't even know it's the following year. It might be the same year. It turns out their father, played by Alexander Armstrong, had uh, died in a plane crash. He decides he's going to look after them. He buys the kids a big old present. And it turns out you open that present, it takes you to a snow planet full of trees. And he's like, hey, it's just like Narnia. I don't think he says that much, but, you know, he's supposed <laughs> to think that. Um, one of the kids, a young little boy who's very annoying, uh, wakes up at night, decides he's going to go open the box, goes through, gets lost. The doctor and the sister have to go and find him. Uh, turns out the trees on the planet are alive and are angry because they're about to be burned to death or something. And that's kind of all the story is. The uh, Madge, Madge Arwell, I'm pretty sure her name is Madge Arwell. Madge comes through the box, ends up going to where the kids are and this like main hub full of tree people. It turns out she's just what they need. They use her to pilot their, their people, as it were, to a safe space so that they won't get killed. Uh, the kids find out their dad's dead. Turns out the dad managed to follow them <laughs> through the time stream after Madge somehow psychically provided a light so he wouldn't crash in his plane. And yeah, it's just soppy, boring, rubbish. It doesn't sound great. And it's a shame because it does sound like it could have been a very cool premise. But uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like this is going at the bottom of bad then. The very bottom of bad. There's nothing worse than the Doctor the Widow in the Wardrobe when it comes to Christmas specials. There we go. So we have two in the bad. Let's see if we can pick it up with Twice Upon a Time. What happens in this one, Dobby? Twice Upon a Time is the 12th Doctor's final uh, episode. And also technically so far, it's also the first Doctor's final episode. Um, basically, the 12th Doctor is dying. He's literally supposed to be regenerating right now, but he's decided he's not going to do that. He doesn't want to regenerate anymore. He just wants to die. Uh, Tardis takes him somewhere. He doesn't know where. It turns out he takes him to uh, 
I can't think what planet it is. He takes him to a planet where the first Doctor just so happens to be also refusing to regenerate from the end of his life. Um, Mark Gatiss then turns up as a soldier who has been plucked out of World War One, And I know it's World War One because at the end of the episode, they have that Christmas armistice where the Germans and the, everyone else go and play football together. Um... Basically, it's an episode that focuses on the Doctor really not wanting to regenerate and then slowly realising that, look, another life isn't going to kill anyone. Uh, we get Bill Potts return. She was, at the end of Series 10, turned into a Mondasian Cyberman and killed. But she returns somehow and he's not particularly happy about it. And him and the First Doctor have to just sort of work out what's going on. It turns out the bad guy's not all that bad a guy. and They're trying to do something nice. They're just trying to save the memories of people so that they can sort of catalogue them for people who might miss them. They're not doing it maliciously, they're just trying to be nice. And obviously at the end of it we get Peter Capaldi giving his farewell speech and regenerating into Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor. What is a Mondasian Cyberman and why does it differ from a regular Cyberman? So, Mondas is a planet, in fact it was the 10th planet in our solar system and it was the twin planet of Earth. And that's where the original Cybermen were first made, or at the very least where the Doctor first ran into them. Mondasian Cybermen are not fully metal. They're far more kind of horrifying to look at, more body horror in a way. They've got sort of giant robotic parts coming out of them, but they've got like a a cloth mask over their face to hide what's underneath. And they're effectively still called Cybermen, but the Doctor refers to them as Mondasian Cybermen purely because that's what he recognises them as compared to the sort of more full-on robots we have nowadays. Okay, so they sort of lean into the original design of the Cybermen from the the 60s and 70s or whenever it was. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting way of sort of bringing together some continuity. Oh, definitely. I mean, if if you're watching the end of Series 10, uh, you get two Masters, John Sim and Michelle Gomez as Missy together, and effectively it looks like the Master is who created the Cybermen in the first place. It's very, it's, it's a really good ending. I love the end of series 10. It's really good. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm not negative towards Twice Upon a Time, but I kind of frown on it a little bit because I wish the 12th Doctor had regenerated at the end of that because it was a perfect ending for him, which then felt like it was just dragged out a little too long for a Christmas special. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, we've got to rank it in our rating board. Where would you put it? I think I would say, I think Twice Upon a Time is a good episode. Okay. Do you think it's better than The Return of Dr. Mysterio? No, I think The Return of Dr. Mysterio is better. Okay. Okay. Well, we're down to our last five. And at number five, we have Time of the Doctor. What happens in Time of the Doctor? Time of the Doctor. We're going from one regeneration episode to another regeneration episode. Time of the Doctor is Matt Smith's final episode. Now, Matt Smith's 11th Doctor knows that someday he will die on a planet called Trenzalore. Uh, he ends up arriving on this planet called Trenzalore purely by accident in this episode. He's following a, a message which is being broadcast like throughout the universe. And he's like, what is this message? I need to find out. He arrives on this planet called Trenzalore in a town called Christmas, which has a truth field around it. And so within this town, you, c- you can't lie. You just say the truth. It just kind of comes out of you, just like a blur out. Uh, he locates the point of this message and it turns out it's from a crack in time which throughout the 11th doctor's timeline has been something that's haunted him and through Mm. this crack in time the time lords who are currently trapped in a in a pocket dimension are asking the question doctor who so they're asking this question basically because the doctor's the only person who can say his name to them we'll come back to that in a minute who can say his name to them and basically let them know it's safe to come out unfortunately it's not safe for them to come out because everyone in the universe can hear this message and ships full of Daleks and Cybermen and blah blah Uh-oh. are all focused on this planet, and so he cannot let the Time Lords come through because the Time War will start up again. Bloody typical. Uh, bloody typical, isn't it? So Matt Smith basically has to stay on this planet. He stays there for oh, I can't. Is it over eight hundred years? I think by the time he's done, he ages. He, as far as he knows and believes, because it's correct, uh, he's at the end of his regeneration cycle. He can't regenerate anymore, so he's just going to live there until he dies. And effectively, he does. He sends Clara away, 
uh, but she's like stuck in the TARDIS or something. I can't remember how it happens. She gets stuck in the TARDIS and it just sort of keeps coming back to Trenzalore. And eventually, at the end of his life, when he's decided he can fight no longer, he's about to give up. Uh, Clara goes and talks to the Time Lord through the crack and says, look, he's done so much for you over the years. Help him. They give him a new set of regenerations, which just completely blows him away. Uh, he starts regenerating and his regeneration is so explosive that it destroys all the Dalek ships and stuff and he becomes the 12th Doctor. See, just re- listening to this uh, synopsis because this is an episode I haven't seen and, you know, I, I have to sort of give it some sort of benefit of the doubt because I haven't seen it. But that feels like a lot of Deus Ex Machina happening all in one episode. The- it's, uh, yeah, it's... um. It's not it's not a bad episode, but it's really when when the doctor is about to regenerate, and unfortunately nowadays we sort of know ahead of time, oh, he's regenerating in this episode. So maybe there's added pressure on uh on it ahead of time. But when the doctor's about to regenerate, you kinda want a good episode. And I don't mm. think I, I like Twice Upon a Time, but I don't think it's an amazing episode for regeneration. As I said, I think if he'd regenerated at the end of series ten, it would have been a perfect ending for him. Time of the Doctor equally. It, I mean, it came after the Day of the Doctor, which was the 50th anniversary special. So it had it had a lot to live mm. up to immediately, and it just couldn't do it, unfortunately. But it wasn't that great a story, anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I I remember sort of thinking during the it, it was it might have been through the David Tennant because it was sort of the established canon that they would only get a certain amount of regenerations, and I was yeah. wondering like how are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? And it feels. I don't know. It feels kind of just like a, a bit of a cop out that just all of a sudden the the time lords can all of a sudden just give everyone an extra or give well, this is because this is the thing. The time it's been esta- it was established like long ago that you can give time lords a new set of regeneration. Oh, could, basically, it, it, I did not know that. I this, I take that this back. was always the thing, but obviously we were now in a situation where the time lords are trapped in a pocket dimension and until recently were completely gone, and so the Doctor was just going to have to live until he died. Um, he didn't think to ask for a new set of regenerations and they just happened to give him one. We don't actually know if he's got another 13 regenerations or she now, I suppose, has another 13 regenerations or will just regenerate indefinitely. Uh, if you're, if you think about it, you look at the end of series 12 of Doctor Who and there's a new answer that's been given to that question, but it's a stupid answer and we will forget that answer ever happened, okay? You gotta tell me now. <laughs> Basically, the Doctor is the reason Time Lords can regenerate and came from another dimension and was a child who just kept regenerating whenever they died. And all Time Lords, uh, come from the Doctor. And the Doctor forgot all about this. And so the first Doctor still remains the first Doctor because who knows what's going on. But they've also limited her regeneration capabilities so that she doesn't remember she's this sort of character that can just keep... Re- like, it's so stupid. It's not It's not even worth talking about. Tom. Yeah, I'm confused and frankly a little annoyed. So yeah. uh, let's go with a rating. Time of the Doctor. Where would I you think, put this one? I think the Time of the Doctor is okay. I think that's okay. the first of our okay episodes. Let's put it in okay. Now we move on to an episode I have watched, Voyage of the Damned. This is Voyage one, of the Damned, yeah. This is one of David Tennant's with a very special guest uh, assistant. Correct, yes. Kylie Minogue, uh, purely stunt casted as Astrid Peff, I dare say. Um, this is an episode that I don't have an awful lot of problems with, but I don't have an awful lot of love for either. Mm. Um it's basically Titanic, but in space. The, the Titanic is set to crash. The Doctor has to stop that from happening. He has a group of people who are on the ship with him that he's trying to help. One of them's not particularly nice. The rest of them are quite nice, but they slowly all die. Even Astrid, who is played by Kylie Minogue. Um, the bad guy is a guy called Max Capricorn, who is planning to destroy this space Titanic for the insurance money. And... That's kind of all there is to it, to be honest. You get, I mean, Russell Tovey's in it, and Russell Tovey is an actor I cannot stand, unfortunately. You do get the first appearance of uh, Bernard Cribbins as Wilfred Mott, but he's only in it for about two minutes, maybe. If that, it's 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 fine. It's it's you know what it, it's it's like it's like the new Jumanji movies. It's one of those rompy <laughs> adventures that's fun to watch, but you don't really care about it when you finish with it. But wouldn't you say? in purely the context of a christmas episode that that's kind of what you're after you're after something that 
you can have as like a one shot. It's not going to be too heavy on Christmas Day. It's just going to be a nice old uh, adventure thing to to just sort of enjoy. And it's pretty lighthearted. Do yeah, think, absolutely. Do you think it I mean, fits that bill? I think it does fit that bill. And you've got to remember, like a lot of people who are watching TV on Christmas aren't going to be keeping up with. I mean, I'm obviously telling you all a story of what's going on around mm-hmm. the Christmas specials. Most people are going to be, well, not necessarily most, but a lot of people are going to be sitting there on Christmas Day just like, yeah, all right, and Doctor Who's on, we'll just let that run through. And an episode like Voyage of the Damned is perfect for that, in fairness. Uh, I, I still don't think, you know, even though it's fit for purpose, and I would say, you know, is a good episode for Christmas Day. Does that mean it's a good episode overall? True. Not really. Not really. It does feel pretty Christmassy. But they teleport down to Earth briefly and it's very snowy in the streets of London, which are empty because the previous two years, something terrible has happened to London <laughs> on Christmas. So no one's bothered to come out. I remember that. And I remember enjoying that <laughs> little bit of continuity. <laughs> um it's 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 fine, you know. What I mean, it's I I would never want to shit on it, but it's it's not the best. Top of good? Oh no, sorry, top of okay or bottom of good? Would you say? I think I think I'd say top of okay. Top of okay. Of the damned, yeah. Let's put it in the top of okay. Where the hell did that go? Uh, I put it in the bottom of bad. That's very mean. Well, that's um, definitely not true. I am going to put that there. Okay, and now we have an episode, another one that I've seen and remember fairly fondly. Uh, the Runaway Bride. The Runaway Bride. The introduction of Catherine Tate's Donna Noble. And in this episode, she is not happy because on her wedding day, no less, she has randomly appeared inside the TARDIS. Uh, the Doctor is completely unshaken by it. He's like, what's going on here? She's very lippy and is not happy about it. And basically, the episode starts with the Doctor trying to get her back to her wedding. But over the course of the episode, it turns out that there's a giant space spider who's who back at the start of time uh, ensured that a ship full of her babies was uh, encased in the centre of the Earth and this spider queen, Arachnos, the Arachnos queen, has come to Earth today to wake her children up because the rest of her family and her species were killed during the Time War. It just so happens that Donna has gotten herself involved in this completely by accident by falling in love with a guy whose name unfortunately escapes me. Uh, but he's been dosing her with particles called Huon particles, which basically would have helped to raise these children. Uh, and the TARDIS also has Huon particles within it. As the two reacted, that's how Donna got plucked and put inside the TARDIS on her wedding day. Uh, that's kind of all there is to say about it. It's really good, though, this one, they beat in up. comparison. They beat the spiders, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's the main thing. They fl- The Doctor beats the spiders by completely emptying the river thames flooding them to their death and it only stops doing this in this venge- vengeful rage against them because donna tells him he can stop now and i mean i've said it before donna noble my favorite companion this is her introduction she's just at the start of her her brilliance here but she is very she's a character who's very willing to tell the doctor to stop and she's very when she's with the doctor they're like best buds but if if she has to, she will put him in his place. And mm. that's I like that in a companion. Absolutely. And I've just had a quick Google to remind myself of what the uh, the Queen looks like. That is, some, us, yeah. that is some good monster design right there. Uh, uh, if, if you're looking at the face, <laughs> I'd say it's all right. Are you looking at the whole body? Uh, I've just seen the whole body. That is a little bit more hokey. but it's It, it looks good at the time. Nowadays, it's like, whoa. <laughs> and it's a, very, it's a very campy, cheesy portrayal by... Oh, who is it? Sarah Alexander? No. Sarah, Sarah Parrish. Parrish. Sarah yeah. Parrish. It's very cheesy and like over the top, but it was, it's, it was good. I really liked that episode. And maybe there's a little bit of, there's a little hint of nostalgia to this one for me. I also um, remember that the, uh, the Ragnar spaceship, uh, it looks half like it's a, a Christmas Christ- star, yeah. but also coated in webs, which is some yeah. good, good design as well. I, as I say, I've got a lot of fondness for this episode as well. Uh, I probably a lot down to nostalgia, but I've got a lot of time as David Tennant as the Doctor, as you say, yeah. Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. Fantastic, great introduction, and uh, yeah, I hate spiders, so they're always going to be a great, <laughs> a great baddie as well. I'm gonna say personally because i haven't been able to throw too much of my opinion in here i would say this is going fantastic i think this is very top of the uh, of the fantastic for me yeah very good very good i am gonna put that there 
Next up, we have, funnily enough, The Next Doctor. This is an episode I don't remember that much, but I think I did watch. But tell me a bit more. So, in 2008, after Series 4 of Doctor Who aired, Donna Noble had had her memory wiped and the Doctor was off on his own again. We were told that the next episode was going to be called The Next Doctor. And I believe, during that year... David Tennant had also said he was going to be leaving the show. And so we genuinely thought, oh, are they about to do some weird backdoor thing and introduce the next Doctor before it's time for him to actually appear? Turns out they didn't do that. But if they had David Morris, he could have been all right as the Doctor. He was pretty good in this episode. But it turns out he's actually a man called Jackson Lake, whose child was taken from him by the Cybermen in Victorian London, no less. Uh, and the trauma allowed him to basically... Uh, in, 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 what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, he took on the memories of the Doctor, which had been stored inside something called a time stamp or an info stamp. I think it was an info stamp by the Cybermen. He opened one of these up, saw all the memories of the Doctor and became convinced he was the Doctor himself. He had a sonic screwdriver, which was actually just a screwdriver that made noise by tapping things. He had a companion called Rosita. And he was just like, I'm the Doctor now. And the Doctor turns up and he's like, hmm, this is interesting. Is this the future me? Uh, no. Uh, the Cybermen are kind of in the background of this episode for the most part. There's a, I can't remember her name, but she's played by Derv Le uh, a, a woman who basically hires, not hires, but steals children to make them work on what turns out to be a giant sort of wooden Cyberman that, Cyberman that stamps all over Victorian London. It's, 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 it's what it is, this episode. This is not a great one by any stretch of the imagination. It's the curse of the Victorian themed episodes. Yeah. <laughs> They're always going to suffer. I do remember this one very vaguely now. And I do remember enjoying the, the, uh, banter between the fake doctor and the real doctor. But I don't yeah. really remember much in terms of, uh, you know, a, a critical plot that you need to watch. Um, so with that in mind, I'm feeling that this one might go in okay. I, I would say this one's okay. I think I'd probably put it at the bottom of okay. Okay. You think it's a bit worse than the time of the Doctor? Yeah, I think at least the time of the Doctor. I mean, maybe it's just because it's a regeneration episode, but I feel like at least it's got a plot I can remember. You know what I mean? Yep. No, that makes sense. And that takes us to the last episode in our ranking, which also, I believe, happens to be the first Christmas special of the yep. modern run which is The Christmas Invasion. Tell me a bit yeah. about this one, Dobby. The Christmas Invasion picks up from the end of series one of Doctor Who. Uh, Christopher Eccleston has just regenerated into David Tennant. He crash lands back in London on Christmas Day and basically immediately falls asleep. He falls into some kind of sort of post-regenerative coma. And we spend most of the episode with Rose and her family just thinking, what is going to happen here? Because... This new, this new guy that Rose doesn't really know is the Doctor. And I guess to a lot of new people is just completely, well, this isn't the Doctor. Mm. This new guy has just turned up and he's not here to help us properly. He's just kind of asleep. Uh, Earth ends up receiving messages from aliens called the Sycorax. And at first we think they just want to talk to us. Later turns out they want to enslave humanity and have a call have gained control of one third of the population and have basically effectively made this one third of the population go stand on the edge of rubes all over the place at great height and have said, you belong to us now or we're going to kill one third. Uh, it turns out they've gained this control. It's called blood control. At the start of the episode, we see, I think it's the UK government, have sent a satellite into space which just happens to contain uh, blood. And it's O positive? I think it's O positive, as the Doctor later discovers. And by having this uh, this O positive blood, they gain control of anyone on Earth who has O positive blood. Uh, this episode is, for the most part, it's Rose trying to, you know, get to grips with what's just happened. This is now mm. who the Doctor is. And she's Billy Piper's great in this episode. She kind of has to step into the role of the Doctor herself. She, she, she's not great at it. We'll put it that we'll put it that way. Um. And it looks like all hope is lost until uh, the Doctor does wake up, having just had a nice cup of tea. And the second David Tennant wakes up and steps out of the TARDIS, which is now aboard the Sycorax ship, he is just, he's like that. He's the Doctor. He's brilliant. He gets about 
10, 15 minutes at the end of the episode to just really show what he can do, and he nails it. Um, we also get to see Harriet Jones, who had been made Prime Minister within Series 1, deposed by him after she uh, gives the call to destroy the Sycorax ship. And he's not very happy about it. He says, don't you think she looks tired? And her career just spirals down from there. It's, 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 it's a good episode, this one. He gets it his bloody hand chopped off, doesn't he? He does. He gets his hand chopped off, but because he's still within like the first six hours of regeneration or something, he can grow it back. And he bloody does. And that new hand is a fighting hand. I, I he, like that bit. I like that bit a lot. He also kills the Sycorax leader who has just surrendered. But upon the doctor turning his back, the Sycorax leader gets up and tries to kill him. Uh, the doctor throws a Satsuma at a button, which just happens to let the Sycorax leader fall to his death. You can kind of forgive it. It's Christmas. They um, have a blooming sword fight on top of their ship, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Big time. It's, uh, it, it's, I, I wouldn't say the uh, 10th Doctor is necessarily more of a swashbuckling character. You sort of get that impression from his appearance mm. in this. But you, what he does say is, because he's sort of going through, like, I don't know what sort of man I am yet, sort of speech he's giving to them. And the sort of line he gives after he kills, or not necessarily kills, but consigns the Sycorax leader to death is, no second chances, I'm that sort of a man. And I love that, because that does suit the tw uh, 10th Doctor very well. Yep, I agree. I think this is a fantastic introduction. Uh, I was a little bit sceptical because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, the Tenth Doctor, um, Christopher Eccleston, is my favourite Doctor. Uh, I think uh, David Tennant did a really good job of, you know, freshening it up. But um, yeah, I think this is uh, this is as good as I could have hoped for for a introduction for the. What am I saying? The follow up to my favorite to my favorite yes, doctor, yes, yeah. um, and uh, I would say this one gets ranked very highly. I would even be maybe inclined to put it in the greatest. I hmm, I think I'd put it in fantastic, and I think I'd put it between. I might put it at the bottom of fantastic myself. Interesting. Uh, do, do you think there's any sort of uh, bonus points for being sort of? the the first of the uh of the for being the first christmas special of the new I, do there's not an awful lot christmasy about it you've got robots who are dressed like santa because why not you got uh, borderline it's... genocide in it what more would you want <laughs> that is good but i have to but i have to go on what i think and i think in terms of enjoyment i think everything in fantastic i enjoy more than it and everything in good i enjoy less than it and so christmas invasion just kind of makes sense for me to be you know at the bottom of fantastic well, you are the Doctor Who expert, and so I will defer to your expertise, and I will put that at the bottom of Fantastic. And so with that, we have a entry for... Uh, sorry, a ranking for every entry. Uh, I will run down what we've got so far. So at the greatest, at the top... Actually, no, let's start at the bottom. Um, at the, the bottom of bad, we have the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. Then the Snowmen. In OK, we have the next Doctor, Time of the Doctor, and Voyage of the Damned. Uh, with good in the middle tier, we have Twice Upon a Time and the Return of Doctor Mysterio. Fantastic, we have a stacked lineup of The Christmas Invasion, Last Christmas, The Husbands of River Song, The Runaway Blight, Blight, The Runaway Bride, and The End of Time. And finally, topping the list at the greatest is A Christmas Carol. Now, Dobby, is there anything yeah. in that list that you would change uh, or any orderings that you might alter at all? I... Hmm. I don't think so necessarily. No, no, I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm sort of the the one I'm umming and erring about is the end of time and the runaway bride. I might switch, but that would purely be because I have so much nostalgia for the end of time, and it was the, it was the first uh, first um first TV show to. Doctor Who was the first TV show that I truly ever really fell in love with. Mm. And David Tennant, and while I really do love Chris Reckerson's Ninth Doctor, it's David Tennant's Tenth Doctor who was sort of there with me in, in my formative years. And so cool. this is an episode, it's a two-parter, it's a story that I do just sort of hold really dearly to me. So do I think it's better than The Runaway Bride? Hmm. Not necessarily. I think The Runaway Bride is a better episode and a better christmas story yeah i think i don't think i will switch them around 
Fair enough. I agree. I think the end of time, as you say, it's, it sort of has a few detractors in hindsight. And so I feel like we need to champion for it and uh, give it the credit that it deserves because it's an episode we both enjoy. It's it's funny looking at this list now because I think I always knew it, but seeing it in tier form, I always knew that Matt Smith had the best Christmas special. But look, like looking at it here and seeing that he also has three of the worst <laughs> just kind of makes me laugh. I think looking at this list as well, Peter Capaldi, the Twelfth Doctor, probably does the best when it comes to the Christmas special. Too fantastic, too good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, he seems to be the most consistent. He doesn't quite hit the heights of the others, but he's got very few. In fact, he doesn't have any in the bottom two categories. He's got no. He's a top to severely the top of the table. underrated, severely underrated Doctor, the Twelfth Doctor, and a lot of people sort of dropped off because in series eight he wasn't what they wanted him to be immediately but mm. if you've if if you're one of those people do pick go and watch certainly at least last christmas and these christmas specials and see what they do for you because i mean the 12th doctor is my second favorite doctor the 10th doctor is my favorite the 12th doctor is my second favorite doctor and i think if there was a doctor who most aligned with my personality now i'm a 27 year old man it is the 12th doctor without question yeah yeah, I can see that a lot, but I've got a lot of homework to do because, as, as I say, there's a lot of these later episodes which I need to see, and I think your enthusiasm has rubbed off on me, and I am very excited to see what these episodes offer, and fresh eyes are never a bad thing. Uh, mm. But I think we have our definitive rankings right here on this here board. Yeah, 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 I'm very happy with this list, actually, I think. Very good, very good. Well, for people watching at home, tell us what your favourite Christmas special has been for Doctor Who, or indeed any show. And uh, let us know if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, because this was a lot of fun. I love this ranking This was a things. lot of fun, yeah. And, I mean, uh, we can do it for far more than Doctor Who. I'm sure Tom can do some Star Wars. We, between <laughs> us, we've got loads of stuff. But hey, I'm always down to talk about Doctor Who. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, now that we've got kind of the setup, this is kind of an experiment. We've not done this kind of video before. Hell, I only thought about doing it about an hour and a half ago. Yeah. So if this is tanked, then no, no skin off our nose. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you think about uh, the format and what your favourite Doctor Who special is. And uh, we will catch you in the new year. But have a good old Christmas or festive season, however you choose to celebrate. The world may be falling apart, but that means we can't have cake. <laughs> and we shall see you soon my name has been tom my name's been dobby and this has been a very special episode of uds radio thank you very much and see you next time goodbye merry christmas merry chrysler Listen everybody, hello! Listen everybody, hello! Listen everybody, hello!